And now it's time to talk about factorial. And you'll be saying, hey, Navin, we are here to learn coding. And now why we are talking about maths? See, the thing is, when you work with factorial, there are a lot of concepts which covers. And also it helps you to think logically because that's your first place where you are thinking. I mean, not the biggest code, but you have to, you have to think there. Also, in future, we are going to look at recursion and factor is a one way where you can use recursion properly for a beginner. Okay, so let's get to the factorial and here I'm going to create a new file and I will name this as factdemo.py and that's the file. Now you will be saying, okay, but we don't know what factorial is. It's actually very simple. It's one of the easiest thing in maths. Uh, don't tell that to a kid who is into school, but because I was struggling with it. Anyway, the point is, when you say factorial, it's very simple. When you say, if, you, if I ask you, hey, what's the factorial of 5? Uh, you can calculate by saying, okay, factorial of 5 is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. If you can do that, if you can multiply, you got the answer. So it's not the factorial, it's more about multiplication. But yeah, so factorial is this, 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Or... If you want to make it in a proper sequence, in the ascending order, you can say 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. Whatever you do, you will get the same output. So the complex logic here is just to run a loop and multiply the numbers from 1 to the number which you mentioned. So we will go in a, a function way. So let's create a function called fact. And I think I have to disable my copilot. Okay, so we got a function fact. And of course, we need to call it somewhere. So we'll call it here fact by passing a value let's say i want to find the factorial of five and once it returns a value i will store that in a result and this is a result i want to print it somewhere so i will say result simple stuff but unfortunately we don't have this fact function defined properly and you can see we are getting an error here now one way if you want to bypass this error you can write a keyword called pass so let's say if you create a function and in that function, you don't know what code you have to write now. If you want to ignore errors and stuff, you can write pass and it will not give you error. Because you're saying that, hey, I'm getting a function. I don't know what to write there. Just say pass. Okay. Uh, that's a keyword in Python, by the way. But here, I know what to type. So basically, uh, whatever number you're passing, you just have to accept that number. So I'm accepting it here or not as a number in a variable. I will say num. And once you got that number, let's return a variable called res, if that makes sense for the result. Because I, I'm already using the result here, so I don't want to confuse you with the same name. Let's say res. And initially, the value for res will be 1. Okay, it doesn't matter what you pass. It will always return 1. And if you don't trust me, I will just run this. I will say fact demo.py. I don't know why I have this file open. Let's run. And you can say it will return 1. But that's not the correct answer. We have to do that calculation here. So what we have to do now is, if a user says, hey, I want to find the factorial of 5, which went into num, I have to say 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Run a loop and just multiply. Or you can say 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5, your choice. So I'm going to use a loop here, and I'm going to use a variable i, and we are going to use a range here because I want to go from 1 to 5, or 5 to 1, your choice. Let's go to 1 to 5, and we'll start from 1, will end at 5. But if I say num, it will end at 4 because that's how range works. Range goes from the first value to the second last value. I want to include the last value. So I'll say num plus 1 and give a colon. So now we are going from 1 to 5. And every time you do that, you just have to multiply that with rest or not 1. You have to multiply that with i. I think your job is done. It's so simple. I don't know why I say it complex at the start because it's complex for the school going kids. I mean, not the current kids because they are way smarter than what we were, depending upon who is watching this video. But you got the point. Let's run this and you, you can see we got 120. And you can verify that by manually multiplying it or go to Google and search for what's the factorial of 5 and you will get the answer. You can do it for a bigger number. Let's say 12 and this should work and you got a bigger number. And if you go beyond that, God bless your machine, if that is possible. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if this is correct. And this is where you go to Google and search. Factorial. I'm not showing you the screen. I'm just first checking if it is correct. Factorial of 20. Yeah, it looks like a right number. I'm going to share that with you. So yeah, we are right. The number looks close. Okay. But let's say if you say 30, I want I want to see where it breaks. 
still doing it strong python is able to handle that properly and we are testing the ultimate thing now still doing it i don't know if it is correct factorial of thousand i don't know why i'm having this fun uh okay when uh this failed i think so value is four two three yeah so four zero two three that's how we are starting so it looks good python is doing well uh, so this is what you can do with the factorial and simple code. Now, in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about recursion and stuff. And we can do factorial with recursion as well. Why I'm saying this is because when you go to Google and search for, give me a factorial code in Python, they might give you recursion code. This is one way. The second way is recursion. Uh, let's see that in the upcoming videos. <laughs>